Hey, it's your host, Maya Alicia. I'm back with another one-on-one -on -one interview, and today's guest is Zach North, and he's a new upcoming artist from Charlotte, North Carolina. Hi! Yo, what's going on? I'm doing really good. Thank you. I'm glad to have you here. How's your day been going? It's been going good. It's been going good. I appreciate you asking. Let's get into it. Okay, so, <laughs> Zach, you're the man behind the mask, the man we're all drawn to know more about. You're a new artist on the rise from Charlotte, North Carolina, and you first released in 2019. So first off, I gotta say big congrats on that. You've done many events, like being a special guest with Stunner for Vegas, at his show, The Smoking Waves Fest, just to name a few. So before we get into your new song that just dropped May 3rd, I wanna spin the block real quick and take it back to when you first started. So tell me what your journey has been like since you first released in 2019, and just how has that been going for you? Yeah, yeah, that's a dope question. Um, you know, I feel like when I first started out in, in, in 2019, you know, I was just getting my feet wet, right? And and, and now I feel like I'm, I'm submerged in the water. Like, I'm getting ready to start swimming. Um, it, you know, if I can give you an analogy, that's, that's probably a perfect example, right? I was just, like, releasing music. At that time, I didn't really understand the, the, the game and how the industry works and how, you know, it's not just about releasing the music. I felt like then that releasing music and making music was like 90% of it. But now where I'm at, I feel like it's only 10 to 20% tops. And then everything else um, makes up a career is, is, is 90 to 80% of what you do. So that's the biggest difference now is just put a strategy behind what I'm doing. Because I know you started and then the pandemic hit. What was your reaction to that? Because I know you were just getting into the motion of things. So I know that probably made it difficult trying to put your music out there. Listen, I'm going to tell you right now, that's a sore spot for my manager. He uh, he went off on me. Um, <laughs> I I, I kind of got rogue during the, um, got, got ghost during the pandemic. And uh, instead of just honing in and, and, and capitalizing off um, TikTok before TikTok was TikTok, I kind of just sit back and, 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 and watch. And that was my fault. I own that. So I thought we had a little bit of motion and then the pandemic hit and we couldn't be outside. We couldn't perform. So it was a little discouraging, you know, as a new artist. Um, but we, we bounced back, right? The next year, we was like, all right, pandemic ain't going nowhere. So, you know, we found a way to bounce back, capitalize on online and uh, start moving through that. But it, it was definitely tough. You're right. It, it rocked us a little bit. Yeah, and I'm mad that you didn't utilize TikTok. That was that was what you needed to do. Like I see you on there now, but that come on out. Like you could go viral so easily on TikTok. Yeah, you right. So, you yeah, right fall with that one. But you know, it's it's still. I mean, anybody gets on there now, they they still got a chance to be in that top one percent. Um, you know, but I definitely missed that wave to where I feel like some of the content I dropped now, had I dropped it in 2020, oh, we would have been to the moon. Right. I feel like it's easy to go to the moon on TikTok and just keep on posting and posting and posting. Then one day it's going to take off. Because, you know, with the algorithm, TikTok, you just got to get lucky. Like TikTok, they pick and choose. They're, they're choosing. Right. <laughs> so I ain't going to get too political in that, but we, we know. <laughs> yeah, we know. We know. For those who are, you know, just getting introduced to you, Zach North, I want to get into your your persona. So walk me through you coming up with your style, your image, and how you want to be perceived. Yeah, for sure. So so as far as like the, the whole style, um, you mean in terms of wardrobe or, or a mask? Is that what you're asking about? Everything. I want everything. Like what made you be like, oh, I want to do the mask. I want to do this. I want to have this style. I want all of it. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So. And, you know, grow, I'll tell you this, man, I, I, ain't, I ain't really gave nobody like the, the juice like this, but growing up until people realized like, oh, he, he's good at sports. Um, I didn't really fit in. Um, you know, I like what I like and I, I never I, I, I never was able to get into the crowd. One, I grew up real poor, so I didn't have all the J's. I didn't have everything like that as a kid. Um, you know, I had Nikes, but shit, it was Nikes that skateboarders wear and stuff like that. So I, I always wanted to be in front of, you know, everybody I was uh, seeming to be extroverted. Um, but as I've grown, you know what I'm saying, and started learning myself as a, as a young man, um, I become really confident and solidified in who I am. And so the, the need for me to have uh, fame, I don't aspire to that. I'm actually a lot more introverted. Um, when I take this mask off, you know, I, I do stuff like, I like to go to clubs and stuff like that, and I'll go by myself. 
sometimes, you know, but I stay in the back and I just observe the ambiance and the music and the light. So I don't really like being, um, having too much attention. Plus I got small kids. And so I wanted to be able to separate, uh, church and state basically like you know so i wanted to separate music i wanted to separate my personal life so that as they growing up and playing sports and doing whatever when i come around um it's not taken away from them they're not always in my shadow so they say they, they get a chance to grow up and have a normal life because this thing going to explode and i just want to protect their privacy too wow i love that so the mask basically is to protect your kids and just to keep your you know your identity revealed so that way you don't have to deal with people coming up to you and bothering you but when that mask is on okay come on i'm all with it show time okay okay i love that so with the mask is the exo does it symbolize hugs and kisses or does it have a deeper meaning yeah absolutely you know uh, hugs and kisses but the deeper meaning you know love right and so that's something that i always that's something that i always chased early on and this actually started, I was sitting in, um, I, I used to work a job and I had finessed my way into, I don't have a degree, but I used to fin I finessed my way into like the corporate world at early, early, early. And um, I was sitting in my job, my cubicle one day, and I just started drawing and I was drawing all these different faces and I, and I was making music and writing for other people at the time. And I was looking at these faces, I found them the other day and I was like, dang, how can I, how can I make this, um, a mask and so i had it created into like a pixar character and i released music in 2019 under this pixar character and people was like oh this is dope you know are you gonna ever show your face this and that so then boom the mask came about right and so the the design on here like i told you i grew up trying to chase validation and love and all this stuff so that can be blinding and so the mask you know when it actually zips up it's it's a straight face there's no emotion because it doesn't amuse me anymore so this is what it looked like Mm. Oh, that that's tough. Okay, <laughs> I love mm -hmm. it. You just you said I'm not saying no more. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's, that's what it so, is. So basically, I want to make sure I'm understanding. So the EXO is just love, like it just like love is on your eyes. Like you're not worried about any validation. It's just all you see is love. You just want that. That's what you want. That's what I was chasing, but it can be uh -huh. blinding. So I wanted to put it in my eyes, so I'm so I'm used to seeing it. And whenever it comes. I don't misconstrue that for genuine love. Wow, I love it. And like, you don't really see that in the music industry. I feel like you're for you to be introverted, you're really stepping out of your bubble and you just, you're changing the game. Cause you don't see artists like that. You don't see artists stepping out and being different. I feel like, you know, we see a lot of the same things. So I appreciate that. And thank you for sharing that with me. No doubt. I know you say a lot of people look at you like, who is this weirdo with the mask <laughs> on? So how do you change that narrative? Um. Well, we started out and when we first started out, it was like this material and the mouth didn't move. So for people, it was kind of throwing them off because they was hearing me talk behind this still face. So one thing we did was, you know, throw the zipper on here. And so people can see my lips, they can see my mouth and it humanizes it. And so now even when I'm with my team and we go out, they forget that I even have a mask on. It's just become a part of life. And, um, you know, when we walk into a restaurant, people will first look like, what the hell is going on? But as we're there for 30, 45 minutes, people just passing by and it's just, it's a normal thing. Um, so so that's, that's, that's one thing we did was just humanize it and stop putting the focus. When we first, we, we, my career, we kind of planned it out in three phases. So in the first phase, we in phase two right now, we'll be there for the next couple of years. But for the first phase, we wanted to introduce the concept and we put this mask in people's face and was like, hey, look at me, I have a cool mask, I'm different. But now that we into like the musical phase, uh, releasing the music that um, that I believe in and that I want to re release, we stop focusing on the mass and just focus on the music and on the content and on the art. And that allows people to humanize it to where it feels welcoming to them. Exactly, exactly. And I feel like you have a welcoming spirit. I saw in one of your videos, you could tell the kids loved you and they were like, oh my God, hey! And you were passing, I believe you were passing out flyers. So. Yeah. What are you noticing when people start interacting with you? Like, yeah, they say, oh, that's a weirdo. But like, then they start talking with you. What's their reaction? It, it, it's a different reaction, whether it's males, whether it's men, whether it's women, whether it's children. It's, it's a completely different reaction. Um, you know, I, I'll tell you all three kids, they're kind of amazed. Usually you would think that they kind of get scared when you put a mask on. But kids, they smile. They come up. They want to shake my hand um they think it's cool men uh it's, it's about a 50 50 split like the older generation 
you know, I feel like 35 and up for the most part is like, what's going on? But then below that, 34 and below, they like, I mean, this is dope. And, you know, and then when they hear the music too, they buy in. Women, probably at a 90 to 10% split. Women, y'all just nurture and, 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 and love anyway. So for women, it's like, I love it. You know, so it's not so much pushback. Yeah, for me, I, I gotta say, for me, I like it. I think it's cool and it's different. It gives me very trippy vibes, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any hesitation or nervousness when you decided to say, oh, I wanna step out as an artist, I wanna put the mask on? Like, was there, cause you're very bold. So, how did that go? Yeah, it, it was. It was actually a, a whole ordeal, man. I lost, um, I lost some working relationships behind it. Um, you know, some people just had different viewpoints and, and there were other things that contributed to that. But for the most part, you know, we, we just couldn't see eye to eye on uh, direction. So, you know, I, I did lose some working relationships that I had. Uh, but in my soul, I knew that what I have is 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 big. It's monumental. And so I had to go with that and that, that gut feeling. Well, I love that. I agree. I feel like stay on the stay on your course. Don't worry about other people because everybody's not going to see the vision. That's what I learned. Everybody's not going to believe in you, but when you pop, they gonna be back. They gonna be back. <laughs> so when you pop, hey, you said it, you said it, you said it, not me. <laughs> I said it. Look, we got it right here in recording. They gonna be back. So yeah. that's just that. So on an interview with um, Jukebox, I saw you said that you don't like being called a niche artist. How do people put you into a niche? Yeah, you know, so when the concept first came along, it was like, mm, okay, you can maybe do emo rap. Or to back up, I put out a, pro, a, a mixtape last year, and it was called If You Love Me, Let Me Know. And, it, you know, it had 10-plus songs on there, but what a lot of people don't know is those songs aren't necessarily tied to what I do creatively. Uh, you know, number one, we, we was just created with the mix because those songs were reference songs for other artists, every single one of them, whether whether it was Post Malone, YK Osiris, you know what I mean, whoever that, that, that didn't pick the songs up, I decided instead of letting them go to waste, I just put them out. You know, we put a mix on them, we put them out. And so now we coming into more what I do. And because those songs were all over the place, people were picking little, uh, they were picking the, the subgenres and trying to say, okay, this is your niche or this is your niece. When in reality, I write every genre of music. I'm a writer first. But when I get into the core of what I do, my sound is, it's, it's, it's definitely, uh, com I don't want to say commercial in a bad way, but modern day, what commercial is for hip hop is, is definitely relate relatable. That's the word. Mm -hmm. It's very, very relatable. So it's not so much niche. And I noticed you do tap into all areas because I want to um, piggyback off you saying Post Malone because when I'm listening to your music, definitely um, I hear Travis Scott. I heard a little Ty Dolla Sign. I heard a little Post Malone. And I, Don Tolliver, I heard that too. I don't know if people told you that. Yeah. But it's like a mixture of genres. And I'm just like, wow, like you're talented because, you know, you rap, you sing, and you can hear a little bit of everybody in that. So, too, you said that... Um, that if they don't pick it up. So you mean to tell me you wrote the music and they were supposed to pick it up, but they didn't? So you just did a song yourself? Yeah, so, I mean, you know, kind of the, the way the game works is like, you know, if an artist is working on their album, word travels like, hey, you know, we're, we're, we're looking for these type of songs or a label will put out these sheets and say, we're looking for these type of songs, um, this type of feel, this type of subject matter. Or you know somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody that says, yeah, we're, we're working on songs and we need these records. So we go into the lab and we, we just, we just cook up records and some of my stories and a couple of those songs. Um, but you got to expect whenever you, you get with an artist that some of that's going to change. Right. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what we did. Just get the word and cooked up a bunch. I have, I have over 1400 songs, you know what I mean? It just sitting in the stash and we just package these together, put them out. I really wrote those songs. Uh, the oldest one on there is seven years old now. Wow. Wow. Well, you need to drop some songs. 1400. You should be dropping every day. I could, I could, but now, now, you know what I'm saying, my manager kind of taught me, because music consumes so fast, you got to drop with intention now, you, you got to have a rollout behind what you do, it's got to make, make it make sense to the fan, otherwise they hear you and on to the next one, music comes mm -hmm. out so frequent. That's true, that is true, well, I just learned something, thank you for that, because I didn't know that, I know you have a mask on, but do you ever see yourself revealing your identity? At this moment? The only time I can see myself revealing my identity is 
on my last show ever on stage, I will take it off and show everybody who I am. I, that's the only way I can see it. Um, but then there's another piece of me that feels like this is so timeless that when I'm done performing and using my voice, the character of Zach North can morph and continue. Maybe my son may want to be Zach North. I don't know. Um, I, at this moment, nah, I don't. I don't. I don't. We, we, we haven't looked that far uh, ahead into it. We, we okay. don't have to re it's, reveal right now. Okay, it's giving me very much Michael Myers or like, you know how they be like, <laughs> yes, I like that. I think that'd be cool. You never know, because your son might want to get into the industry. So I think that'd be cool. You can hang it up in your closet and put it on like a um, mannequin. Yeah. <laughs> I'm mad you just compare me to Michael Myers, not Michael Myers, no. <laughs> no, not in a bad way. It's just how, you know how they have like the spinoffs and they have like different actors and stuff. Oh, no, yeah. No, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. Everybody likes Michael Myers. So. Yeah, 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 straight up. <laughs> So what was the highlight of this journey? Oh, easy, easy. Um, so the very we were doing a bunch of showcases locally and just putting the brand out amongst peers, amongst industry personnel and, and local influencers. And um, then we got the call uh, from 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 somebody who's who's in there, you know, and and he told us to come on and we worked it out and we opened for Travis Porter. At House of Blues last summer and in that moment as it was leading up to I wasn't necessarily nervous I was looking out it was a packed house a lot of college kids um wasn't really nervous but then when I went down and and, and my set was coming up and I looked out and you know they could see me backstage and they were starting to get excited it was a moment when I walked on stage because I because I have a sound designer, I have light design, so when the lights went out, the sound dropped, I started walking on stage and they could see me through the darkness, they started screaming. And it was in that moment I did a double look and I looked back like, oh shit, this is happening, ain't no turning back. And it was that moment right there, it was career defining. And after that I knew, oh yeah, this is everything that I think it is. And it's, it's bigger than I think it is. Wow. Wow. And I saw, too, on another interview, you said you got in contact with Stilo, and then he said, I can play your music to the baby's manager. So did you ever hear feedback about that? I know that was exciting to hear. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So this was in the beginning, 2019. Like, I had, right when I had released uh, Don't You Miss Out, which probably gives you those Travis, Don Tolliver vibes. I had just put that out. Um, I was blowing Stilo up. He was doing listening sessions. Stilo owned the studio up here him and his partners and I was hitting him up and he was like, man, who is this with this Pixar character that keeps reaching out to me? Um, so I'm blowing him up and he finally called and was like, what? <laughs> and I was like, man, I'm trying to play some music. He was like, oh, man, before you come, man, let me see what you sound like. And I sent it to him. He called me back in like 40 seconds. He was like, yo, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm trying to get into management and take my career off too. And I can't do nothing for you right now, but this is what I can do. Uh, and you know, he, he told me he could tap into his network off love that early and he's connected. So, you know, he brought in his people and, uh, you know, shout out to Carter. Carter did sit in on that session and in that session, I don't want to go too much and, and tell Carter's business or his story, but the consensus in the room was, yeah, this is, this is what I think it is. Has the baby ever heard your music? I, I have never met him in my life and I can't. I can't speak to that. I, I have no idea. Um, you know, shout shout out baby, but I have no idea do do people who interact with him or currently interact or previously interact with him, yeah, they 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 aware of who I am. Does he know? I I would go on the record and say, probably not. You know, who I at this point, humility, I feel like, you know, who who the hell am I to say, you know, that this top forty star artist it knows who i am yet you know he will though he will okay i was just about to say that he will he don't know you and i i feel like a collab's coming it's it's, it's coming it's I, coming I, we, yes. we probably, well it they, is so a lot of people don't understand that artists have to do a lot of groundwork and majority of the time artists don't get paid off of music sales so i wanted to know from you as an independent artist what has been the hardest thing throughout this process in the music industry um, 
the hardest the hardest thing is I move very militant, persistent, buttoned up, organized, and I have a hard time delegating. So, and it's just because I operate at a certain excellence and I hold myself to that. And um, I have a hard time delegating. So the, the, the hardest thing is letting people do the job that they do. I'm, I'm this year, you know, I've been so intentional about just trusting people to do what they say they're going to do and, and get it done in a way that is suitable to the brand that I'm building. Um, so that's the hardest part has been delegating. I can definitely feel that because I'm a hard head. Like, I like everything going my way. I need it to be just like this. I agree. We have to put our trust in people because I just feel like y'all not going to really come through like y'all say y'all was. But they really do. Like, we can't be negative. Your team, your team is amazing. Like, the graphics, the production and stuff. So they're doing their thing. They are. They are. And, and they work hard as hell. Um, I tell them probably on a weekly basis at minimal, but I just, I'm grateful um, because it's a lot of independent artists who who don't have what I have, have the team I have. Now, granted, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm going to tell you that it, it starts here, right? A team has to want to work with you. So they, 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 they definitely want to work and they, they believe in what I got going on. But I also do my best to empower them and, you know, just give them as much creative control over their creative processes as well. How did you actually go about finding your team? Because I know you just said it is hard for people. So what's your advice to others? Um, you know, me and my manager got this saying, me and Stilo got this saying, like, I'm a fan of who a fan of me. And what what that means is if you got to press for somebody to believe in what you got, if you got to sell yourself to somebody else, that's probably not the team that you should be working with. If you got to sell yourself to somebody else, I won't go to a label if I have to sell myself to that label. And, and I'll tell you, you know, I may end up at a label uh, just because just just for certain reasons. But if I have to sell myself, I'm not going to end up. So the people that come to you that believe in you, whether that's family, because I have I have I have some some friends that I grew up with. You know, they on my team and I have people that I met through through Stilo. We pooled our resources and, and made this team. But it was all on the gesture of I believe in what you have going on. I see your vision. Um, we didn't have to sell it to anybody. I feel like you've overcame so much. And to have a team and to people that believe in you, I feel like that's a, a confidence booster at best. Like, you have those people surrounding you, wanting to see you do well, and just go on that journey with you. So I really like that. And I want to go back to one of my favorite songs from you, Kids Die Too. I just feel like since we're talking about overcoming things and having that support system, I appreciate you, you know, pouring out your heart because the song was really deep and you go into, it's not about who your kid likes, not about what they want to do. It's about their health. And you really took us down that journey. So I got to know what went all into that because it really was a story. You took us through a story through the hospital on the video to just the um, voicemail in the beginning. It, just, it was a lot to unpack. It, it was a lot. It, it was a lot to unpack in the studio as well. Um, so First of all, thank you so much for, for taking the time to listen to that song. So that style of rap, you know, where it has no hook and I just get to talk to you from a listener standpoint, um, that that's the core of what I do. And so as I progress throughout my career, I'm going to give you my story in that format over and over again. We, we, we saw it with from Slick Rick, from Big Daddy Kane, Slick Rick to Jay-Z to, to Kanye to Drake to J. Cole, we see it. And, and, and I'm going to give it to you in that same format as well. Um, so I appreciate you listening to that. The, the, the process unpacking that, it was tough. Like I said, I have, I have small kids. And, you know, anytime you see your child fighting for their life, a lot of people would never get that, never see that. A, 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 ch a child fighting for their life and, and doing it with such strength that makes you question any excuse that you've ever gave, any any doubt you've ever had in yourself. It, it really makes you look at yourself differently. And then and in that moment, um, like I said, I'm introverted. I wanted to shut down, shut the world out, focus, be intentional with my with my prayers, with my thoughts. But before my son went into that coma, you know, he told me I had a show that same day 
And uh, when, when we was in the emergency room, the very first day it was, you know, this was a two month journey in the hospital, right? The very first day he said, dad, you need to go do your show. You know, if, if you don't do it, then it's all for nothing. And when he said those words to me, it, I didn't let him see it in that moment, but there was no way that I was stopping music ever again. And ironically, through that process, that's what hit the game career, where I started putting my team together and I started meeting this person and this person. Um, it was it was in it was in those moments. So, you know, they say pressure busts pipes or it makes diamonds. That, that there's no lie there. Like you really discover who you are when you're faced with adversity. And um, I'm not sure that I can go through a deeper adversity. The only other deeper adversity I can go through is it could be death of my children. Um, but my son was, he was there. He had a 0% chance of living without emergency surgery. So mm -hmm. I, I looked that in the face. And for that, I know I'm a win. Wherever I put my energy at, I'm a win. Um, I'm built for this. So, Do you feel like with that song that you got out your emotions? Because I know music is therapy. Do you feel like you, feel, you felt better when you made the song? Yeah, for sure. For sure. You know, as, as a black man, like, it, it ain't it's it's becoming accepted but it ain't quite just yet cool yet just to really show your emotion and just i talked about that in the song we always say don't cry be strong be tough and i had family members everybody telling me be strong be and i'm like man bump this like what are we talking about i'm hurting this is this this is painful you know and um i cried with my kid like once he woke up from his coma um in, in in like two weeks or whatever you know whatever that specific time was we cried together i i held him like it, it was it was man yeah yeah it was therapy it was for sure i'm glad i got that out wow well i'm glad you got out too and again thank you for sharing that because it really was a lot it was it was just it's like you know when people say i just like you can't you don't have anything else to say it's just like wow that's how I would react to the song. It was just, it was a lot. And I want to know too, is your son doing, is he doing well? Is he good? God is good. Okay, God is good. God is good. <laughs> On a positive note. So what did he think about the song? Did he get to listen to it and watch the video? Yeah, he was, he's he, he, he a real sweetheart, man. Uh, he, he, him and him and his brother, they my biggest fans, uh, straight up. And, you know, I told him I did the song. I let him listen to it when he listened to it in the in the hospital, he had so much emotion going on, but he didn't cry. He was just like, that's the best song I've ever heard in life. And um, I was like, I, I, I appreciate that. And um, then when he came home, um, you know, I, I, I hooked up to, to the big screen TV. And before the video dropped, I shared it with him. You know what I mean? And he broke down and he just cried. And, you know, he he said it was beautiful. And um, to this day, he probably listens to it maybe, I would say, probably close to 10 times a week. I hear him listen to it throughout the house. Wow. Well, I love it. And I'm glad he loved it. And I'm glad he's doing better. Prayers up, okay? Prayers up to the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for that. And thank you again for sharing that. Like, again, I say you've overcome a lot. You've overcome a lot. And I want to go into something else you've overcome which was your performance at Stunner for Vegas show. You had, you had went into the crowd, right? And you had some boys that was trying to play. They were trying to play with you, but you quickly gathered them. You gathered them and you let them know, I'm going to be here for a long time. And they quickly shut up and the crowd had your back. So in that moment when people were like, Stunner, we want Stunner. What were you thinking? One thought, don't lose the crowd. Um, <clears throat> so what had happened was, you know, we came to sound check, and like I said, my team, we move so professional. We at sound check, we going through every micro detail you can go through. Um, I had in-ear monitors when I perform, um, you know, so you can, you can keep your rhythm, you know what I'm saying? The, the, the music's not too loud, so I had the in-ear monitor, had a special microphone, I grabbed my mic, we go out. Um, I was feeling uneasy earlier just because the sound guy had got double booked, so they pulled the dude who runs tickets to do the soundboard because he had previous experience. When, for what I do, that doesn't work. So whenever I was going through my show, the beat dropped. I couldn't hear the beat. So my movements was a little off rhythm 
you know, I'm trying to hear the beat. I can't hear it. And I'm looking at, I glance over at my manager and he looks like a ghost. He's just like, you can't see my eyes, but they so big. And he's like, oh shit, it, this, something's not right. Mm -hmm. But I keep performing. I'm looking at the crowd. They not moving. I'm like, oh Lord, what's going on? Then I hear the chant start. And so I'm like, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. And I told my lighting director, hey, go to the next song. So when he went to the next song, it was the same reaction. Then it got louder from this back corner in the right. My manager comes up to me and says, your sound's messed up. So then I stopped the show. And that's that's when I addressed him. And the crazy part about it is I killed the first performance before with Travis Porter. And this next performance, it was even more people. It was even more people there. And they messed my sound up. I didn't get through my full performance. But I took away more followers from that clip, that action, than I did the first time. And it actually helped me because I had a private listening event on March 10th this year. And my sound got messed up between the DJ and whoever else. And instead of get angry because they messed my sound up, I had one, you know, I showed a little compassion. I let them know, get my music right. But I just kept rocking the show acapella. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the things that kept, and this was for industry players. And that stood out for them too. So I definitely learned from that. Okay, so do you feel like you addressing the crowd had them be like, all right, let me tighten up. Let me be quiet. Because everybody, the energy just changed after you addressed them. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, it did. It did. And then after I addressed them, what we didn't get on video is I got off stage and went out into the crowd and really networked with people. And people was coming up, taking pictures, saying, hey, I haven't even heard your music for what I have heard. I'm a fan. They follow um, there was somebody who drove down to my listener, private listening session from that show that goes to school at George um, Georgetown University in D.C. They drove six hours to come to my listening event. So, you know, I, good stuff came from it. It did. And did you see those boys that was doing that face to face or no? Come on. You think they showed their face? <laughs> they didn't. You had you had them running. You had them scared. And I, I really like how you did that because me. I don't know if I would have been, I would have probably like, oh, dang, they don't like me. I guess I'm going to just go backstage. You said, oh, no. And for you to be an introvert, you can't be no introvert. You quickly gathered them. Listen, I, I, I definitely have become an introvert. And, and they confirm. I took the Myers-Briggs test. I was like, let me just make sure. I'm definitely an introvert now. <laughs> yes, I love how you did that. And, just keep, and also, too, a lot of people, they try to clown artists, but they don't realize, like, everybody's up and coming. So it's going to be people that's like, who are you? What you doing? But like I said, when you pop off, they're going to be back. The, the, the same dudes that were saying, we won't stun. They're going to tell their kids one day, oh, man, I got to see him live. It was amazing. Yeah, all right. All exactly. right. <laughs> but you wasn't saying that before. Exactly. Right. I, people, people love, like y'all, you and um, Hot Boy Shaq in the video, you said people only support you, you know, when it's beneficial and when you only popping. It That's just the, that's the way of life. That's the way of life. So that's how it goes. But Thank you for spinning the block with me. I want to get into your new song now, Are You Dumb, featuring Hot Boy Shaq. So how are you feeling? What's the feedback been like since you dropped it on May 3rd? Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, man, I think dropping the song as, as a relatively unknown artist, I haven't even felt the smoke from it yet. Um, we, we, got, we got a whole plan in play, you know what I mean? Like media runs, we, you know, got a, Got a, mark, got a marketing team going on. So as we roll that out, I'm going to start to be able to feel that over the next 90 days. Um, I think a lot of a lot of new artists, they they drop music and then they just on to the next thing without really working that. So we're in the process of working that now. Um, so I, I really don't have a, 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 a feeling yet towards like the result of dropping that song. But what I can tell you is, now that I know that song was the train leaving the station, that feeling, that shit feels good because I know what's in the vault and I know how this year's been to go. And I know in December, it's going to look different than it looks now. That's, mm -hmm. I know like, okay, yeah, 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 here we go. Yeah, a lot can change in six months. Yeah, exactly. A lot can change. And I've been seeing you've been back to back. We're going to know this song out. So I can't wait to see what happens with it in the, in the um, months to come. So that's going to be great. So I want to get into the process of it. Walk me through the process of the name of the song, the beat, how you got that all together. Yeah, for sure. 
So um, I'm a type of artist. I mean, I'm an emotional artist, and I need, I need some, some. I mean, I'm, a, I'm an emotional artist. I'm an emotional writer as well. I know some writers they come up with melodies first, um, or cadences first, then the beat is built around that. I'm different. I want to hear the, the the beat first. It's got to speak to me, and once that speaks to me, then then I can invoke emotion and, and come up with idea and things like that. So when I heard the beat. Yo, immediately I started doing the mel the melody. Hit me on my line, say you done with me. Mm. And then, and then as it came along, I was like, oh yeah, I think I think I think we got one. Um, and then you know I sent the draft, sent it to my manager, sent it to creative team. We sitting around, we talking, and I think it was a no brainer. Everybody was just like, yo, Shaq is perfect for this for what we for what we doing in the city, what he's built how he genuinely rocks with us, it's only right to, to to make that collab come about. And shout out to Shaq. Shaq different. Shaq came to get on the verse. This man recorded his verse in 11 minutes. I was like, bro. Oh, wow. I, I thought he came in with it written already. He went into the studio, recorded his verse, came out into the booth. I was like, bro, you different. Very, very different. 11 minutes. So he like Jay-Z, one take. Y'all only get in one take. Yeah, but I think he... I think I think I think he stopped one time and was like, "Let me get that, let me get it right here." And then he picked up and he went out. But it was eleven minutes. I was like, "Bro, bro, you different." Wow. <laughs> okay, okay. And I like your ad libs too. You saying, "Watch me." Yeah. I like that. So you came up with that too after you heard the melody. Yeah, watch me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, me. I'm gonna tell you what I perceived from it, and then I want you to tell me what your what the goal was. Me when I listen to music. I, you know, hear the lyrics, but then I make it my own story. So I was taken from it, like, are you dumb? Use your common sense. One monkey don't stop the show. Who do you think you are? You know, you, I didn't lose, you lost. So, you know, that's how I took from it. Like, for, from, like, a standpoint of, like, say you lost a friend or, you know, lost out on a job. Like, are you dumb? You know what I'm saying? So that, how did, what, is your, what was your goal? Yeah, that's, that's, exact, that's exactly what it means. Like, you know, you, you can hit me, you can break things off. I'm like, are you dumb? Like, okay. You, you, you're going to hold this L. If you ain't the one, you're going to hold this L. It, whether that's a love interest, whether we smash them, whether we, I work, I'm work, i working with you, it's a business relationship, whatever it is, you break it off. Like, are you dumb? And then, you know, you got everybody that wants to act tough now. Like, I don't know. It, just because young boy lived the life he lived, everybody in these streets feel like they young boy, King Von Dirt, they ain't living that life. So, mm -hmm. I know for a fact, you know, I'm not out here living that life, but because I got to protect myself and come home to my family, everybody I'm with, we strap all the time. So you you could come over here with that dumb stuff and threatening us, but it's like, are, are you dumb? Like, you know, we, we really certify with these things. Don't make it go there. We don't want to go there. We not live like we not on that type of timing. Don't be. Well, y'all heard it from Zach North. Are you dumb? Look, are you dumb? <laughs> I yeah. love it. So uh -huh. I I love the video too. I want to get into that. What made you use a tarantula and you had the black angel wings? What does those props signify? Yeah, so another nugget. You know, I'll give you another nugget. So Are You Dumb is one of one of a few songs that we we gonna put on the EP that that we'll give within within the next few weeks. And um the whole vibe for that project was it was rebellious. We we put together this this hip hop project the, the, this rap project that sounds has a very current rap sound um two of the songs you know kind of trendy like are you dumb another song and then two of them give you that kids die two type vibe right the core of who i am and what i do is on the first and last song a part of that because the mask is rebellious to the standards of what rap is and what hip-hop is we went with a leather look for for the video and our performances and what we have on. And so that's where that's where the leather comes in. That's where the bikes come in on that. You think about rebellion and you think about bike games. Um, you think about leather, you think about, you know, rock and roll and how rebellious that uh that was. Well, Ye, Kanye said in his interview with Zane Lowe, we the new rock stars. And, and and that's how I feel. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm 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 the rock star. Like I ain't just your neighborhood rapper, no, I'm that, I'm him. You know what I'm saying? So I try to give that off whenever I'm doing something. I'm either all the way or I'm no way. And 
Um, so in the video, we wanted to give those elements off, and it's on a rural type of setting. It's on it's on a horse farm because that's how I grew up. That's that's the type of growing up I did. I grew up in rural North Carolina. Um, so I wanted to give a piece of me. Now the spider came about because the spider is a representation. My my movements are minimal in the video. Like in, in shots, there's not a lot of movement for me. It's very slow. Um, spiders represents uh, patience and persistence. And so that kind of represents my grind. Um, I think I heard Ross say one time, I don't care about moving fast. I care about moving. That's just that. That's just situation to how the Zach North brand is. Nah, this ain't something that popped overnight. Uh, and it, it popped by methodical and strategic actions, patience and persistence. So we wanted to we wanted to symbolize that in the video. Oh, I definitely, I definitely got that. And I like the black and white concept. And I saw on your TikTok, you said you were scared. You didn't look like you were scared in the video with the spider crawling off your face and stuff. Hey, listen, I got a deep voice, but I was on the video set. I'm going to tell you, I was like, hey, man, y'all come get this shit. <laughs> I did not, I could not tell. Like, oh, my God, you had it crawling off your face and stuff, but you did that. You ate it up. The video went, the video went hard. It did. You did that. Yeah, I was nervous. I ain't gonna lie. I didn't know tarantulas jump. So when that little thing jumped three feet, I was like, oh, I'm mm -hmm. done. Cut. Time out. Hold on. <laughs> so so it jumped on your face? Nah, it was it I was I was handling it and I brought it up to the camera like this and it jumped three feet. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I was like, oh no, 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 no. I was like, time out. I was like, what's going on? I looked at the man, I was like, is this was that normal behavior? What what he was like, oh yeah, they jumped. And I was like, oh, nah, hey, we need to hurry up and get this scene because I'm done with this. <laughs> exactly. Look, are you dumb? Look, okay. Exactly. Are you dumb? <laughs> oh, will we get more features with Hot Boy Shack? Because I think you guys collab well. Y'all y'all bounce off of each other. I like that. And I can, I definitely hear the Charlotte, like, I feel like Charlotte music has a different sound, if that makes sense. Yeah. Straight yeah. up, straight up. Yeah, Charlotte, we, we definitely develop in, um, a culture, right, uh, mm -hmm. where where people can really tap in and be like, oh, that's Charlotte. You know, shout out Sean the First, shout out 20 on the Beat, shout out uh, Jetson, and a lot of other producers I'm leaving out that really have helped kind of craft that sound, right? And, and, and artists too. But yeah, man, me and Shaq, that's bro now. You know what I'm saying? We was out feeding the homeless, we was in a studio um, earlier this week. You know, he was working on a record, I was just there. You know what I'm saying? We 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 ended up coming up with a record, another record that we'll collab on that to be his record. You know what I mean? I can't say too much, but yeah, we 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 locked in. We we tapped in. Okay, we spent the block with you, Zach, and then we got into your new song, Are You Dumb? Everybody go stream that on all platforms featuring Hot Boy Shack. So last thing I gotta know, I know it's more music coming from you. So are you are there any exciting big celebrity features that we should be expecting in the near future? <sighs> I'm gonna tell you celebrity features. Nah, right, right now. Um, I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm, I'm not on that. I, I want to work. I'm a fan of who a fan, of. and so I feel like the easy route is to go eat up a celebrity feature and then you eat off their fan base. But, but the truth about it is, you're gonna run your streams up. But did you really retain them fans if you don't have the catalog to back why they're listening to you? So. Mm -hmm. I ain't really, I'm not really on the, the whole celebrity feature, you know, right now. I, I truly feel like in my soul, I'm, I'm the I'm the biggest feature that somebody can get. I know what my catalog is going to be worth. One. And so, you know, I'm just betting on myself. They they going to come. Celebrity features will come. Um, the celebrity, the songs will come. I'll write for other artists and, and, and different genres. All that's coming. But right now, the focus is Zach North. I love the confidence that you have, and I think you're gonna do big, big things. Like I said before, it's coming. You got the pop, okay? And I just feel like I love, I love your how you think too, because you're not so pressed about let me get to the top where the celebrities are. You're just gonna be in your humility, and it'll all come to you. They'll come to you, like you said, because you're that guy. So it's gonna happen. great answer. Yes, yes. It's, so it's that I'm that guy, but the the, re, the real thing is I put in that work. I know yeah. what I do behind the scenes. I'm, I, I get this, I get this, people work 40 hours a job and then they only do 10 hours on their dream. If I work 40 hours on a job, I'm giving this a, a, another 60 hours. So I, I know it's going to pay off. I put the work in.
Exactly, exactly. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing what Zach North has up his sleeve. And thank you so much for joining me. And keep on doing your thing. Absolutely. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah.